Now, a lot of times I find that's not so much an issue as the desire that many of us have to be angry. And we'll talk about this as a separate issue because spirits hook into this uh, in major ways. But many of us have a desire to be angry. Now the reason why we have them is many fold. A lot of times it's because we feel like other people did us damage and we're not to blame for it, they are to blame for it, and they should fix it, not us. Does that make sense? So we have a lot, we have a lot of projections or expectations that other people to fix things. And so in the end, we really want to be angry rather than actually deal with the underlying grief. And our desire to be angry, we often are not truthful about. You see, on the spiritual path, when you're angry, what are you looked at? What, what, how do people look at you? Oh, you know, you're not very spiritual if you're angry, right? So what they do, what you finish up doing if you're on the spiritual path often, is you suppress all of the rage and anger that's there inside of you. You completely lock it down. And you make out, even to yourself, that you're not angry. Right? And, it's a, and you can do this really easily, to, to be frank, particularly if you become detuned or you go out of body a lot. Um, you can detune very much from your true emotional state. And, and so what, what I'm doing at that moment is I'm telling myself, no, I'm not angry and I don't desire to be angry. Now, if you're not truthful with yourself, you're never going to get to a causal emotion for a start. Right? But secondly, any spirit now can hook into your rage at any point in time and manipulate it. Right? And they can do this over and over and over again. And we act in a manner that we feel is not angry, but actually is very angry as a result. Now, I've seen this happen over and over and over with so-called spiritual people who are looked up at by everyone else. Like a lot of people um, who are in a state where you know they're treated like a spiritual guru are actually quite often very, very angry but in a very suppressed state and they, they have relinquished all their desires, they say, including the desire to be angry and the problem with it is that they're not speaking the truth and whenever you're not speaking the truth to yourself of course a lot of spirits are going to help you not speak the truth to yourself as well and to others, and they'll just hook into that. I just don't want to answer questions just yet. So that is one area of the issue of anger I want to deal with separately, because it is a big issue with regard to spirits. But can you see how whenever we don't face the personal truth, if we don't face a personal truth, whatever that personal truth is, now we're able to be manipulated. Right? So um, I'll give an example of what happened with myself and Mary a few weeks ago and I think I may have mentioned this before but who knows. Um, what happened was we were driving along in a car and Mary was starting to get really angry with me, right? really upset and angry with me. And then she, then she noticed that she didn't really feel that angry but she was verbalising all this angry stuff right at me. right? And, uh, and she realised that right at that moment that she had a group of spirits around her who, who were angry with men and I was a good target. Right? So here's, here's the person on earth who was in the, rage with me, in the rage with a man, so I'm the man, right, in the rage with a man. That's pretty obvious, I shouldn't write that there, should I? <laughs> Superfluous. And, uh, and so... She was in a rage with me, but not understanding actually that there was this group of spirits around her, women spirits, who were actually in a rage with me. They were really, really angry with me. And what they were doing was they were using her to express their rage to me. Does that make sense? And she didn't even feel it was her rage even in the end. She didn't feel that angry with me. She just realised she was saying a heap of things that she didn't even really believe herself. Right. So then we had to look at, all right, well, why would this group of spirits be able to actually influence her in this manner to, to express their rage to me? And that's when she came face to face with the hook, the hook she had to the spirits, which was to do with pleasing women. A woman pleasing other women. Many of you ladies and many of you men with the same gender, the men, have the same injury. This is how it works. 
when I please the women in the audience and I'm a woman, now all of those women can connect to me and they can project all of these loving emotions at me and they are in agreement with me and I feel really, really good because they are in agreement with me. If I'm a woman and I then disagree with that group of women, now not only is their emotion triggered of what the disagreement's about, but also there's a second emotion triggered and that is we're not women sticking together. We're not women all having the same viewpoint towards men. We're not loyal to each other. So there's this emotion of disloyalty towards the gender. Does that make sense? Now many men have the same thing of course, where, where a group of men will get together and if one man says, oh I don't feel that way about my wife, then he's like hammered because he's now disloyal to the gender. Now, when we feel a feeling that we've got to maintain loyalty to our gender, we are actually now allowing the whole of that gender in the spirit world to manipulate us in any which way they can. Right? And that includes if they're angry with a man, and I'm not really angry with a man, but they are, their influence can, by my wanting to please their women, I can then be influenced through that process. So can you see how if we see the truth of what the hook is, we can start seeing what's going on. In reality, the emotion that Mary wasn't dealing with at the problem was her desire to please women even if they were being unloving. Can you see that? So while she's expressing all this anger to me, to the man, it may appear that the problem is that she's angry with men. But actually that's not the problem. The problem is that she's unwilling to deal with the emotion, or she was unwilling at that moment, to deal with the emotion of why she needed to please the women. Does that make sense? And this is where it's very difficult sometimes when we're in this interaction spiritually, is because often we think, oh, I'm, I'm, angry with women, I'm angry with men so I must have all of these spirits around me who are angry with men. Well, while that is true, because that is our law of attraction, we're not understanding what our hook is into those spirits influencing us. And our hook is often totally different to the actual emotion we're expressing at the time. Do, do you get that? The hook is totally different than the emotion at the time. Monica, you want to comment? Um, if we use a mic. Yeah. Just wondering, how on earth do you work the night then without, because I tend to overanalyze things anyway. Um, how do you get to that space if you really want to stay with the emotion or like get into it without getting too intellectual about it? How do you actually deal with the emotion? Yeah. Well, no, how do you work out what the hook is? All right. Because I thought it was um, whatever emotion you were avoiding th that they would hook into. So that's what I've been concentrating on. And well, it was an emotion Mary was avoiding, which was the emotion to please women. Does that make sense? She was avoiding that emotion. Yeah. And because of that emotion, these women, she wanted to please these women and that meant even doing what they felt, what they felt she should do. But did she think it was to do with the anger one though? That's what I'm saying, because I, I tend to lump all the angry women ones in the we're all angry at men basket. <laughs> and I'm just wondering then, so how do you take it a level further and work out what the hook is? Well, what, what I do myself is I go firstly, well, I'm angry, so I'm out of harmony. <laughs> So I'm angry, so I'm out of harmony with love and truth. That's the first thing. And this is probably the next subject that I want to discuss with you. If I'm angry, I'm out of harmony with love and truth. Simple as that. Now, if I allow myself to speak out all this anger and rage at a person, I am very much out of harmony with love and truth at that moment. Right? And I am going to open myself up to spirits speaking their anger and everything as well through me. Does that make sense? So, so at some point I've got to take stock and say, hang on a sec, I'm angry with men myself, not them, myself. I'm angry with men. That is part of the issue. Right? But then I've also got to ask just one question in addition to that. And that is, why am I willing to express the rage and anger of a spirit towards these men? In other words, why am I willing to do what I'm told <laughs> by people who are in worse condition than myself? That's really what the question we've got to ask ourselves. You see this happening in a group all the time. 
where you know you're all sitting around for dinner. You're all sitting around for dinner, and all of a sudden one person comes in who's in a really angry place or whatever. Can you feel the mood of everyone? Like the mood. You don't have to say a word. The mood just goes Whoa, like everyone's. Everyone's now afraid of triggering that person's rage. Can you see that? So what is that person really doing? They are controlling you with their rage without saying a word. That's what they're doing. They're controlling every statement now that comes out of your mouth. Now, we had this happen in our trip uh, over to, the, to New Zealand. We were sitting down at, uh, at Karen's place and, and we were in a group. There, this was after the group had finished. This is Karen. Karen, can you just stand up, Karen, so they know who you're talking about? That's all right. That's Karen. And Karen's got this lovely place in New Zealand and we were staying there for a little while at her invitation. And, and what happened is we had a group there and, uh, and, and then um, the group finished and most of the people went home and a couple stayed overnight and then left the next day. And, and then that night, we, myself and a few others who had left were talking about some spiritual matters and all of a sudden one of Karen's friends comes who, who was invited to come the day before. But she didn't come the day before. She came actually when she thought she could avoid me the most, which was <laughs> she thought I'd be gone by then, right? So, so she came hoping that I wouldn't still be there. Right? So that's the emotion I get from her the minute she sees me. Like she sees me and goes, the feeling in her is just like, oh no. Like <laughs> I was hoping that he'd be gone by now. Like, so that was the feeling in her. Because of that, she felt quite a lot of anger that I hadn't gone, that I, that, I, that I was still there. And she walks in and sits down to a meal that had been prepared for her. Now, at that moment, everyone sitting at the table felt an emotion from her. Right? She didn't say anything. Everyone said hello. She said hello. You know, all the polite stuff goes on, right? And she didn't say anything, but everyone felt an emotion from her. And the reactions of each person sitting there were very different to that emotion. Um, Mary was sitting next to me and her reaction was, AJ's now got to stop talking about anything. <laughs> and it wasn't towards the person that came to visit, it was towards me. Like, so in other words, Mary's feeling was, I don't want you talking about any spiritual things in front of this woman. So that, that, was, that was Mary's emotion. Now straight away what had happened in that moment is Mary's condition was lowered to the person with... So in other words, she was allowing the person in the resistive condition to dominate her life more than desi her desire to actually talk about spiritual matters. Does that make sense? And then a few of the others went quiet for a little while, like, you know, just went quiet. What do we do now? Like, uh, you know how, how you have that feeling? This person's not going to like what we're talking about. Do I still open my mouth and talk about it or what do I do? Now, the instant we have that feeling, we're actually now in danger of not acting in harmony with our desires anymore, right? What we're doing now is we're acting in harmony with the desire of the person who is actually projecting the rage and anger at me. Then I'm acting in harmony with their desire. That's the purpose of anger when you think about it, isn't it? Why else would you do it unless it's to control? Right? So this is the issue we face with spirits. Oftentimes we have a group of spirits surrounding us who are in a rage. But they're very nice to us as long as we toe the line, just like a person on earth would be. And you know this from any of you who have experienced abusive relationships with a partner, right? The person is nice to you as long as everything that they want to have happen happens how they want it. As soon as it doesn't happen how they want it, they're now angry with you. Right? And I'm not saying that they just sit down and have a chat with you. I'm saying they're in a rage with you. They'll say all these nasty things at you and everything, right? Project it. And the reason why is because these people are with you to control you that's the whole purpose. Why would you be with a person on earth unless it's to control them? What's the point of a spirit being with you unless it's to actually get something out of it? Unless they're a person who loves you and just wants to help you in any way. Now many of these spirits actually believe they're helping. 
So that group of spirits who were with Mary believe that they are helping Mary. Right? Mary's had a pretty hard history with regard to men. And when I say a pretty hard history, um, if I describe some of the events from the first century, most of you ladies would be absolutely horrified about what happened to her. Right? So she's had some very, very difficult events from the first century about men. Now that emotion inside of her connects her to these other spirits who have also had very, very similar events and history with men. Does that make sense? So that's a connection. But on top of that, Mary has had this other emotion from the first century about women. Many women in the first century treated Mary terribly. They treated her like she was the whore, the prostitute the, and all those kind of things and they treated her very badly. Often it was the women who actually treated her worse than the men in terms of their projections, in terms of talking to her, shame, trying to shame her and all of those other things, right? So of course there's going to be an emotion there of wanting to please the women, wanting to make the women feel good so that, so that she doesn't get these projections. And these women were just hooking into that emotionally. Now, what that means is then that they could then express their rage through the process at the man. Now, if I'm in a state where I don't, I, I can feel my anger rise inside of me, but I realise I'm out of harmony with love when I have this anger, so I've now got to own this anger and just go away and not express it at somebody. Because the moment I express it at somebody, I am now hooking into the entire process of what the spirits also want. Can you see? If every time I felt this anger rise inside of me towards men, for example, I decided I wasn't going to express it at a man, but instead I was going to get a punching bag and bang, bang, bang and own the emotion of anger inside of me, can you see that takes away the power of the spirits who are influencing you? Can you see that? Straight away, well, they're going, no, 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 don't do that, don't do that. I want you to be angry at the man, you know, <laughs> not at the bag <laughs> or owning it within yourself, you see. And this is why many, many of us, when we're angry, we don't want to go away and own it. We want to stay where we are and project it as heavily as we can at the person who we're projecting it at, right? That's what we want. And the reason why we want to do that is because it, it feels inside of us that it gives us a voice for it, but in reality it's one of the most damaging things we can do and it's also one of the things that spirits hook into the most. Because if you can, you can either choose to work along with these spirits or to act out of harmony with them. It's up to you. That's a choice that's inside of you. My suggestion is never act in harmony with what a spirit wants you to do. <laughs> All right? Now how do I know what a spirit wants me to do? Well, any spirit obviously who wants me to do something that's good is okay to act in harmony no. with, obviously. But how do I know when it's not that kind of a spirit? Quite, quite easily, really. If I'm in a rage or in anger, then I'm, I know straight away. I'm pulling in straight away lots of different spirits who are going to be way out of harmony with love in that place. I know that straight away. Anything I do from that moment on, justified or not, is out of harmony with love. Everything I do from that moment on is out of harmony with love. Right? If I don't allow these spirits to have a voice for their anger, then straight away, and I don't mean by me not owning it, I mean by me going and privately feeling the rage instead of publicly or with a person doing it, that's owning it for myself. If I publicly express it or express it towards a person, now I am not in a place where I have anger at all and I'm now in a place where I'm actually very under the control of any person in the spirit world who wants to express that anger through me. Does that, that make sense to you? So, so when I'm in this space, I now give them a voice. So now a lot of what's coming out of me is not even mine. Right? And you've all been in this place at some point where you said a bunch of things to somebody in a rage and then go, whoa, where did that come from? Yeah, where did it come from? <laughs> it came from a group of spirits with you who wanted to express all those things that, to that person because they have all those emotions. You are certainly connected to those feelings 
but you've got to look at where it's come from. The fact is you gave those spirits a voice, right? Stop giving them a voice. They need to own their own emotion. You need to own yours. When you own yours by going and bashing a bag or whatever, now they don't get the voice they wanted. They don't get the means to express it to the male that they hate. Does that make sense? They don't get the means to express it to the mother they dislike or any of those things. They actually now have all of their power in the interaction is now taken away from them. Can we just go over to there and then back uh, back there? When, when you say something and you're projecting anger and you don't actually remember what you've said after the fact, yeah. that's often not your own words? Of course. Okay. <laughs> Why well, would you definitely remember what you've said, wouldn't you, if it came from you? And there's only been one time in my life where I felt so angry that I couldn't see the person I was angry at yep. anymore. I was almost blind rage is the only way I could describe it. Yep. That's spirit influence as well? well? Of course, but remember, every one of these things is a hook. We've got a hook into them. Yep. We've got a reason why we're doing this with them. Okay. Right? And a lot of times the reason why we're doing it is not because of the anger. That's what I was just illustrating here. The reason why Mary was doing it was, wasn't because of the anger, it was because of her fear of displeasing women. Does that make sense? No, so, yeah. so if she didn't do it, what would all these women do to her? You know what they did with her for the next 45 minutes? They just projected rage at her because she refused to project rage at me. Huh? I can see why you'd want to avoid that. <laughs> okay, so you can see why you'd want to avoid it. So if you feel that, you start wanting to project rage at the man again, then that makes everything better. It doesn't make everything better. It just makes your soul condition worse as well. But we often feel it does because we get relief from the spirit world. So if you can think of a lot of the spirits who are in, in a malevolent condition, they, they use, you know, the whole, the, whole, the whole thing, the carrot and the stick, right? You know how that works? Don't you? Right? You get the carrot when you do the right thing. You get the stick when you do the wrong thing. Any spirit who does that with you, out of harmony with love. Right? So if you feel relief when you do the wrong thing, you know you've got a group of spirits around you who are totally out of harmony with love. And if you feel pressure when you're doing the right thing, you beauty. I know I've got a lot of spirits around me out of harmony with love. And doing the right thing is just challenging them full on. <laughs> and we're allowed to. This is a spiritual warfare you are in. And when I say a spiritual warfare, this is a, this is a battle for your soul that you're in, to be frank. Do you understand that? The battle is for your soul, you. You to be your own self, your own individual, your own desires, your own wants, your own, your own feelings being expressed every single moment. That's the battle. And every time you hook into them, you are no longer yourself anymore. You are now being someone somebody else wants you to be. That is now out of harmony with love and truth of yourself for a start. But straight away you've lost the battle. Can you see that? Like We're in a battle for ourselves, for our own soul, to be, be, to be honest, truthful, loving all the time. And we need to understand that that's where we're at. We could, right at the back, wasn't it? Yeah, right up. Uh, two questions. If I'm bashing the um, punching bag and screaming and still thinking of the person that I've just been standing in front of, I'm still hooking in and the spirits can still hook into me. Exactly. Okay, so I've got to just really try and blank off and just come no, from I've myself. I've got to own the rage yeah. that's within me towards, man, towards my childhood rage. Okay. Or the expectation. Remember um, last weekend I talked to you about expectations and addictions. Every single time an expectation in you isn't met, you will get into anger if you don't have a desire to get what's underneath. Does that make sense? So, so if, I'm in a, if I have an expectation of another person, so let's say at the moment I've got an expectation of Sven, right? Sven's the camera man just there. Like, so I've got an expectation of him. I'm going to get angry every time he doesn't meet my expectation. Right? Now I've got to see that what's actually causing my rage isn't some childhood thing about men, or, sorry, a childhood rage about men. 
It's actually because I want to control men. <laughs> I want to get a man to do what I want. And that probably came from my child where I was either got nothing that I wanted or everything I wanted, one of the two, which is both as damaging as each other, right? And what happened was I, I've grown up now to think that my way of getting what I want out of a man is just to get angry with him. Once I'm angry with him, now he will either do what I want or I'll get rid of him out of my life. Right. So, so if I concentrate in, on it and say, God help me to own this and get into the causal underneath it, yeah, so then own, that'll keep me in there and not projecting it out. So own the rage and really own the rage without, there's a, you'll feel a difference when you do it. When you're projecting at another, you're not owning the rage, right? You're not feeling the rage pass through you. You're feeling the rage pass out of you and into the other person, and you like it. We like it. That's why we do it, right? So here I am. I'm in a rage. Right? I'm not so sure there's no one this one either. I'm in a rage, let's say, at a person. So I'm in a rage at this person. I want to be. I'm not owning the fact that I want to be, right? When I really want to feel my rage towards women, in this case, because that's a woman I'm in a rage with, when I really want to feel my rage towards women, it will pass through me, not to her. So what, what you find happen is that you can feel it inside when somebody does this. You can be with a person talking to them and feel that they're in a rage with you, and then all of a sudden they own their own rage inside of themselves, right? And now you don't even feel the projection of rage. They are screaming and yelling, but you're not feeling it hammer you anymore. And if you're sensitive to it, you'll feel the difference between those two states. And you'll also eventually feel the difference between those two states inside of yourself. When I own my own rage, I don't want to have a voice to somebody else with it. I just feel it, feel it, feel it in me. And ironically, when I'm in that state, very, very rapidly I get to the underlying terror or grief. Like for myself, it's usually a minute. Like, let, well now I don't get into rage very often, but if I do, it's usually one minute. One minute and I'm crying. It doesn't last very long at all. Can I just ask something else? When you're talking about um, the willingness to deal with it, yep. if I'm not willing because I'm not getting into it, can I pray to God to help me have the willingness to um, get into the causal emotion? Well, I, I suppose you can pray to God about anything, can't you? But, but if I'm not willing, I, I can certainly ask God to help me be willing, but am I being honest with myself? Like, if I'm not willing, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be more appropriate to pray to God about why I'm not willing? Okay. I knew like, there was something that I was missing there. So that's it. Why am I not willing? And yeah. show me that. Yeah, and then show me that. the law of attraction will help me to get into that. Because God's not going to make you willing. Because <laughs> it's your free will that makes you willing. God's not going to make you willing. Yeah. What God's going to do is expose to you the reasons why you're not willing. Yes, God will yeah, certainly that, do that. That's more or less what I was getting at. Yep. If I ask him to help me become willing, then through my law of attraction, he will help me to... No. No, I have to ask, why am I not willing? <laughs> yes. And then the law of attraction will kick in. Yes, because, because let, let's be specific. If I, if I know I'm not willing, how can a prayer to God asking him to make me willing actually make me willing? Mm. Like, like, firstly, he can't answer the prayer because it's out of harmony with love. Mm. And how is he going to answer the prayer? Only by showing me why, why I'm not willing anyway. I've got to be open to the why. Yeah. Like, if you're angry... You've got to be open to why you're angry. Like, firstly, you've got to be open to the fact that you are angry, <laughs> and then you've got to be open to the fact of why you're angry. If I'm not willing, I've got to... Like, so many people come up to me at the front and say, oh, I really want to deal with this. Is it happening right now? No. Then you don't. So many people say, but I do. I said, no, you don't. Is it happening right now? No. Then you don't. But I do. You know, you keep getting the same answer back every time. The truth is, a lot of the times, we just don't want to face the truth. On the divine love path, you're going to have to face the truth. That includes facing the, that includes facing the truth that you don't want to do it. Right? And be honest about the fact that you don't want to do it. And then ask yourself, if you want to go deeper, ask yourself, why? 
And you'll be surprised what comes up with the why. There's lots of terrors and fears and lots of stuff, shame, and all sorts of reasons why I don't want to do it. Can you see the difference? Yeah. Yep. So whenever you feel like, oh, all right, I'm not staying in truth, instead of asking God to help you stay in truth, say to yourself, I don't want to stay in truth. I don't want to. Why? Ah, oh, because if I stay in truth with that person, they're probably, going to, they're probably going to write me off for the rest of my life. If I stay in truth with that person, you know, if I stay in truth with that person, I'll lose half of my income. If I stay in truth with that person, like, I'll have to leave her and, you know, she'll take half of my livelihood away. If I stay in that, you know what I mean? We have all these emotional reasons why we don't want to stay in truth. But if I don't say to myself firstly, I don't want to stay in truth, I'll never acknowledge the why. And the why is all of the business. Like that's the, that's the emotional business, that's the processing we need to do, the why. So, so this is where it's so important to be honest with yourself. Like when you say to me, when you say to me, I really want to deal with this but I can't seem to get there. What's going to be my answer? Standard? No, you don't. <laughs> you don't really want to deal with this. And the reason why you're getting there is because you don't really, you're not getting there is because you don't really want to. Let's be honest. Then the question is, do you want to know why? Why don't you want to deal with that? Why don't you want to deal with this? Why is a pretty good little question, isn't it? Let's just put it up there. For, why, is this, why is so good? So, I don't want to stay in truth in my personal relationships. I don't want to stay in truth with regard to how I act with people. Why? I don't want to be willing. I don't want to deal with my emotions at all. I'm sick of dealing, I'm sick of hearing AJ talk about it. That's why I, half the time I don't want to go to one of these sessions, you know, even though they're free. How many, how many times have you felt now, up to now, that you'd really like to not come? Many of you are not being honest. <laughs> There's plenty of times where you haven't felt that. And the reason is because oftentimes you get presented with some more truth and there's a deep unwillingness to actually deal with that inside of ourselves, right? And we're not willing to ask ourselves why. What we, what we want to do is have some magic cure, you know? Like, and I've told you that I can't give you a magic cure and the truth is actually that God can't either because these emotions are within you. So even though I'm talking about the divine love entering your soul and helping you through this process of growth, that's not a magic cure for you holding on to negative emotions. Your holding on to negative emotions is totally dependent upon yourself. That's it. Nobody else. It's totally dependent on what's going on inside of yourself. The question you've got to ask yourself is why do I want to do that? So 